The following program is brought to you by Element 14, the electronics community where you can connect and collaborate with top engineers from around the world. Join now at element14.com slash presents. Hello and welcome back to Element 14 Presents. My name is Dave and in today's episode we're gonna build something that looks a lot like an 80s portable computer. Sounds fun? Then let's get started. Amazing hacks. Inspired designs. Each week, Element 14 Presents brings you innovative projects using electronics, engineering, and more. I had this idea um, to do a build that is a portable SX64 mini version with a tiny keyboard and a tiny screen. Um, that is the 2K display. When I connected the 2K display though to the C64 Mini, I quickly realized that it wouldn't be that easy to connect it. So the next thing then was to swap out the C64 Mini for a Raspberry Pi 4, because that one can deliver 4K resolution on two outputs, so that's hopefully working with the 2K display. And if it's not working out, then I also have the Raspberry Pi TFT display, the classic one that I can use for this build. So the main goal here is to end up with something that looks a bit like the retro portable computers from uh, the 80s, mainly inspi inspired by the SX64. That means I want to have a mechanical keyboard, I want to have sound integrated, I want to add a power supply in there. Have a display, of course, yeah, and go from there. So I have this 2K display over here that I want to check out first um, because it's a very high resolution and I want to see if the Raspberry Pi 4 works with it together. Before I start with the case, I definitely want to make sure that everything works together. I definitely want to make sure that I can use display and if I can't use this display, I have a plan B, but let's hope it never comes to plan B. I don't like plan B. I need a USB mini cable for that. It's like the oldest and the newest standard work together. In harmony. Got myself a nice mechanical keyboard. Ooh. Nope. Okay, so there's definitely something weird going on and I think there's a fix for that. I have to find those files again, uh, make some updates and then... Uh, I have a picture on the display, but um, I was on the wrong HDMI port. Turns out that's kind of important, um, but I've set some values. Now I have a very, very tiny display showing very, very tiny text. I managed to get it somewhat working. I don't know, there's a defect, um, it, it flickers too much. I'm gonna play the safe bet here and uh, use the TFT display, the Raspberry Pi official TFT display for that. Now that I've settled on the hardware, I will start building the frame. I bought myself some 10 millimeter by 10 millimeter extrusion bars. There are fixed lengths in this uh, kit and I'm gonna just put something together. Um, I have a plan like where I'm going with this. I will see if the display fits. Do you like free stuff? You can join the Rotest program. You can get free dev kits, test equipment, and even online training courses. In exchange for a detailed review, join our Rotest program. These are product reviews conducted by Element 14 community members like you. Learn more at the link below. Ah, free stuff. So 
So for my Raspberry Pi portable build, I really want to have a good or at least decent audio output. And I found those speakers at my Makerspace. And I also had this um, Adafruit amplifier here. Um, it's a Max98357 I2 S amplifier. And yeah, I want to put it together and see if I can get it running on the Raspberry Pi. But first I have to solder it. So I have this all wired up now and I have to calibrate the power supply. <laughs> I have no idea how to get there. First I have to see what the power supply currently spits out because there's a little yellow flash. So it currently runs at 4.4 volts and I totally understand and agree Mr. Raspberry Pi 4. That's not enough. But there's a little dial in here and I can adjust that so. Hmm. Hmm, shut down. Alright, that's all we have for today. So as you might have seen, um, it kind of looks a bit naked skeleton-like. Um, that's not a theme I wanted to go with. So I ended up running out of um, material that I can laser cut for the case. I, I definitely want to do that, but that's a lot of tinkering and moving um, nodes and SVG. So yeah, that's uh, something I can give an update on. I'm definitely very pleased. I'm very proud of the locking mechanism that holds the keyboard and all the little knobsies I had to print for that. But that took a lot of, yeah, um, 3D printing. Also, I, I have cut so many little plates and I had to open up, open up the whole thing again. And for that, I had to loosen up, I don't know, eight screws and then, yeah. Uh, those screws and nuts, they, they've seen some force. <laughs> also, I had another run of internals laser cut already. Uh, this time it was blue plastic, but the tolerance of the plastic was around 0.7 millimeters, which means, yeah, it doesn't really fit the aluminum profiles. So I don't know what to do with them. I just ended up using the wood that I had cut. That was supposed to be something temporary. I really enjoyed working with those um, tiny 10 by 10 millimeter aluminum extrusion bars. I will definitely come up with another project that will use them. I hope you got something out of the video. Um, if you want to laser cut something of this or are interested in any infos, you can find all that on the Element 14 Presents community platform. I'm there if you have any questions. Feel free to contact me over there. Thank you all for watching and have a nice one. Auf Wiedersehen.